So just recently I was redoing the Enclave quest line on another character of mine so I could be able to launch a nuke with him. Well while I was redoing the quest, I discovered some pretty interesting things that I never realized until recently during the part where Modus gives us an option to take the Enclave exam. And I've been playing this game since the beginning, so yeah it's been years now. And I think I know why I'm just discovering this, is because last time I did this a long time ago, I'm pretty sure I chose to just skip the exam. Because at the part where we have to take it, we can choose to just simply skip it. And doing that will just make us bypass it and continue on with the quest. However, there is a little bit different kind of dialogue that we get if we do choose to skip it rather than take it. Which I'll be breaking down a lot about this part where we can take this exam in this video. I thought this would be worth it to make because it helps promote the quest that you have to do to be able to launch a nuke in the game. And this will show some things that players might have missed going through it. Like myself being one of those players. Hopefully you learned something new out of here. Learning new things about the game is always exciting. I have to say, this took a while to compile all of this together. There's a lot of information compact into this one video. So, on that note, if you do appreciate this kind of content, consider taking a little bit of your time and leaving a like on the video. That'd be greatly appreciated because it helped get this passed around to even more Fallout fans. Let's see if we can get this video to surpass 700 likes. That'd be awesome to see. Anyways, now let's go ahead and get into this. So we can take the Enclave exam modus sets up for us during the One of Us quest, which in case you don't know, this is one of the quests that we need to complete to be able to launch a nuke in the game. So it's important to complete. To start this quest line to join the Enclave and also unlock the ability to nuke, you just have to head on over to the abandoned waste dump and look for the dead agent's body within this cavern. He can be kind of difficult to locate, but he will have this holotape on him that will trigger the Bunker Buster quest. And then after this quest will be the quest called One of Us that involves the Enclave exam. So yeah, before we go down and take that, let's go ahead and see what Modus has to say here before he tells us to go take the exam. If you want to skip this dialogue and get straight into the exam, feel free to use the timestamps available to help navigate you through the video past this. I just figured I'd share this part because this is some pretty important dialogue over what's taking place down here. Just a little taste of what we do here. To see more, please come downstairs so we can become better. Okay, so yeah, that's a little bit about Modus and the Enclave. Now let's head down to the room where we can take the exam. Please, help yourself to something from the dispensers. Once you're seated, proceed down the hall. Okay, so as you heard, right before going into the room where we can officially take the exam, Modus offers us some refreshments here that we can get from activating these hand scanners. Nothing too much, just something to point out that happens on the way to take this questionnaire. Anyways, carrying on here, when we actually enter the exam room, here's what Modus has to say. The Enclave has counted presidents, members of the Joint Chiefs, and prize-winning scientists among our membership. 
Before you're allowed to join such lofty ranks, we'd like you to take a brief questionnaire to see if you possess the knowledge and character we value in our members. Of course, if you feel your strengths are more tangible in nature, you may approach our terminal to continue on to the next section of the evaluation. Okay, so as you heard, what we're about to be taking here will help him identify our character and knowledge too. This will help Modus identify on whether or not we are a promising member for the Enclave. Now, as you can see in the top right, we can technically just skip this questionnaire and just go straight up talk to Modus. I will be showing you the outcome of doing that, as well as a few other different kind of outcomes. But first, I'm going to be showing you here what happens when we get all of the answers correct on this. It's actually pretty beneficial to get the right answers on this. And I had no idea about this for the longest. I'm literally just figuring this out, like I said before. Okay, so we'll start off here with this question. What was your profession prior to your arrival? Now, this is just a personal information question, and actually none of these answers can be wrong. You'll still end up impressing Modus by choosing any of these. So let's go ahead and just choose starting off here, business owner slash executive. Okay, so the next question is, which of the following thinkers' belief systems most closely matches your own? Now, this is another personal information question. However, I figured out after a while, over experimenting with different answers, that Karl Marx can be a possible wrong answer if, in the beginning, you go with military and law enforcement as your personal information choice for your prior profession before your arrival, or agriculture and food services as your personal information choice answer. Yeah, if you choose one of those in the beginning and combine it with Karl Marx being your answer, you will fail this, even if you get all the other answers correct. It's pretty interesting. I'm not exactly sure if Bethesda did this as a little Easter egg or what, but yeah, it is possible to fail because of your personal information choice, and I'll be showing you that later in this video. For now, let's just go ahead and see what all happens when we pass this. I was just giving you a heads up that those personal information choices can be possible wrong answers if you combine them for some reason. And believe it or not, you may think like Elvis Presley in here is pretty random and he'll end up being like a wrong answer, but he's not a wrong choice whatsoever. Neither is John Stuart Mill, Adam Smith, or this guy. I figured out that Karl Marx was the only possible wrong personal information choice. So yeah, let's just go ahead and choose Karl Marx first here, just so I can show proof of that later. Keep in mind though, this time around, I'll pass the questionnaire just because I chose business and executive in the beginning combined with Karl Marx instead of military and law enforcement or agriculture and food services. But yeah, as you can see, this next question is who was the 18th president of the United States? So now we're not getting any more personal information questions. Now we have to answer the knowledge questions, which are facts. So, you know, there's only one right answer out of these, which the answer to the 18th president of the United States is Ulysses S. Grant. Anyways, next question is in a formal table setting, which is the only fork placed on the right of the dinner place? And the answer to this one is Oyster Fork. Lastly up here, we have which general was responsible for the reclamation of Anchorage, Alaska in January 2077 from the Chinese Red Army? The answer to this one is General Constantine Chase. So yeah, once you've answered all of those, you just simply want to submit answers for processing. And here's what Modus has to say about our results. Interesting. results were promising. You might be just the kind of member we're looking for. There is one additional task we'd like you to perform, however, so that we may confirm our suspicions. Some of our most precious external connections were damaged by our former residence, Squabbles, which has made our forays into the outside world trying but we have developed a plan for re-solidifying them. A plan you might help us see to fruition. Please, approach the dispenser. Okay, so as you heard, because of our results, Modus believes that we might be the kind of member they're looking for. Now let's go ahead and see what's said after we activate the dispenser. And then I'll be getting into what we get. That tape is the first step in our restoration. We would have you take it to an old naval surveillance facility known as Sugar Grove, 
Plugging it into any terminal in their signal intelligence room will allow us to connect to their formidable network and sniff out a piece of archive technology that was burned from our memory banks. Now, it is likely the facility will react to our intrusion, but we have seen fit to add a routine to that tape that should turn some of their defenses to your side. A courtesy we extend only to our most promising applicants. Additionally, we've provided you with a little item from our stores we hope will make the whole process go smoother. Now, it's time for us to see what you are capable of. Okay, so the reason why I let that dialogue play out is because when we actually fail the questionnaire, there's different dialogue that's said by Modus. And I wanted to show the difference further in the video. But as you might have heard from the dialogue, Modus left us some goodies in the dispenser. And the awesome things that we get for impressing Modus with our results is for one, we get a unique system access tape to take on this next part within this quest, where we have to go to Sugar Grove and put in this tape in the terminal. The difference with this tape between failing and passing this questionnaire is when we go to insert it into the terminal that's at Sugar Grove, the tape won't be programmed to override the security here. As you can see, it states at the bottom of the list right after inserting the system access tape, initiating external response override. This will not be there if you decide to fail or skip the questionnaire. So there won't be no overridden security. However, if you do impress Modus with your results, these are the overridden robots that he has fighting by our side to make sure we live this whole scenario. Definitely makes this way easier just following them around, watching them take out everything. And as you might have heard, they have different kind of dialogue too since they're overridden. Priority list. Target protection during collection. End of list. Self-preservation routines d d d disengaged. Which I thought this was pretty neat and worth it the spotlight because the developers also took their time programming this dialogue with them too. And this is something that players could easily miss. System override active. You will not be harmed. I know I did. I had no idea about this until just recently, like I said before, and I've been playing this game since the beta. I love seeing things like this where the options actually change up the scenarios in the game. And this has been here since the beginning of Fallout 76. Anyways, we also get from the dispenser an Enclave plasma weapon, as well as some ammo for it too, to help us out for impressing Modus over our results. And these Enclave weapons can vary. There are tons of different modifications it has a chance of coming with. Like for example here I got a recoil compensated Enclave plasma rifle. But you can also get it from the dispenser to be automatic, as you can see here. It could also possibly be scoped sometimes. For example, this one had a sniper barrel attached with a medium scope. And it seemed like all the Enclave plasma rifles that we got from the dispenser were recoil compensated. Not sure if that's just how it always is, but from my results after doing this like a good 30 or 40 times, yeah, kind of ridiculous I know, but yeah, that seemed to be the main modification on the Enclave plasma rifles from the dispenser. Now I will say there were also pistols that came from the dispenser that were not recoil compensated. As you can see here, I got a short Enclave plasma pistol plenty of times, and I got a automatic Enclave plasma pistol plenty of times. So yeah, just in case some of you may be wondering what y'all can get from this dispenser. I will mention I did not get a flamer modification from doing this a lot of times because I know that modification can be pretty beneficial. I do know the modification can potentially be sold from one of the Modus terminals as well as the vendor bot Phoenix at the Watoga Shopping Plaza. This is the location to that vendor. And it can also be sold from the vendor bot at the Watoga train station. So if you are looking for the flamer modification for the plasma weapon, feel free to hop servers until you find it from one of these vendors. And in case you don't know, you can make these weapons legendary as well. The Enclave plasma weapons have the potential to be really, really good. I'm not going to get too much into detail about all of them right now, but 
let's just say they can be really good. I'm sure you might be seeing some people in the comments mentioning about them, so just read through the comments if you're wondering about how good they can be. So yeah, there you have it. That's all we get from when we pass this exam. By the way, I should mention that you can also pass this exam by getting two of the three knowledge questions correct. As long as you just miss one of them, you'll still pass this exam. And the dialogue won't be any different from Modus. It'll still be the same, as well as the rewards from the dispenser. You'll get an enclave plasma weapon with some ammo and that special tape that overrides some of the security at Sugar Grove. Now I'm gonna be showing what happens when we fail the exam. Like I said before, you can choose car marks combined with military and law enforcement or agriculture and food services for the personal information answers and still fail this even if you get all of the knowledge questions correct check this out So yeah, that's what happens after failing the exam. And from the dispenser, we only get that tape that we have to insert into the terminal at Sugar Grove. However, this time, it's not going to override the security there, so we won't have them helping us out. Nor do we get the Enclave plasma weapon and ammo either. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you real quick, just for proof, that choosing agriculture with Karl Marx also fails the exam, even if you get all the other answers correct. Check this out. So yeah, once again, failed. And you don't get no special dialogue for choosing those two personal information choices in the beginning and failing the exam. I just wanted to show that as an example, just to prove that you can fail it by personal information choices. Anyways, lastly here, let's go ahead and get into what happens when we decide to skip this exam and not take it whatsoever, which is what I think I did a long time ago when I did this. And that's the reason why I don't remember these questionnaire rewards that we got from this dispenser during this quest, nor the dialogue. So it'd be pretty good to spotlight all of this. Not interested in the questionnaire then? So be it. Luckily, we do have another opportunity for you to display your abilities. So yeah, that's what's said a little differently when you go to skip this. The rest of the dialogue is the same as if we would have failed the exam. But yeah, we also won't get the Enclave Plaza weapon or ammo, as well as that special tape to override the security if we choose to skip this exam. But yeah, I guess this is a good enough overview over this certain part with the Enclave test. Hopefully you guys found this enjoyable. This took absolutely forever to compile together, but I figured I would 
because this is something pretty neat in the game that I had no idea about for the longest and I figured this would be interesting to others that might not have known about this either. Hope you all found this informative as well as entertaining in some kind of way. I'm out of here though. As always, thanks for taking the time, watching, and listening. Peace.